So I'm constantly having to do further tissue transfers to keep it actively growing and aggressive. So we'll grab one of these. This is a shiitake petri dish. Um, so gonna do some transfers for that today too. I think that's about it for now. Get the flow hoods running. So we're in our lab. We're gonna do some tissue transfers from some of the petri dishes I've selected and transfer them onto these fresh plates that I've poured out. And then we have uh, our liquid media, back tie or just a tool, transfer tool sterilization. Um, unit to basically make an efficient lab space to do all your clean work, transfers, spawn production, uh, you name it. So uh, through the years I've kind of just added an additional flow hood as my, uh, my workload grows. HEPA filters basically pushing out 99.99% .99 effective uh, sterile air that's been filtered down to 0.2 microns. This is prepared by mixing a uh, malt extract agar uh, powder into uh, one liter of water and then sterilizing in uh, an autoclave. Uh, after that, it's poured while the media is still hot into these petri dishes and uh, allowed to cool. Once it cools, it gelet uh, solidifies and it forms, uh, or it kind of gels and it forms this nice two-dimensional surface that our mushroom mycelium can grow across and we can select uh, the healthiest spots of growth about six to eight hundred milliliters of water. Uh, these lids are equipped with a self-healing injection port and also a uh, syringe filter to basically give the liquid culture adequate gas exchange as the mycelium grows throughout the liquid. I kind of wrap my uh, jars in a parafilm, make sure that they're clean when I don't have my flow hoods running. And sometimes it can be a pain to, to pull off on things. So yeah, I'm just gonna douse my uh, tool with some alcohol. This is a scalpel. It has a blade that you can change on and off as it becomes dull. One thing you can do too is just, uh, what I do, is kind of loosen my lids before I start doing my transfers. I'll just take off the... Just touch it to the middle to cool the, school, cool the blade. throw that on the ground so we're not trying to reach towards the ground while we're doing our lab work. We'll also wrap up the rim of our jar lid. Um, that's just because right now I don't have any gaskets. Start agitating the mycelium. Hopefully little fragments of mycelium fall off and get spread throughout the water and form like a chain of uh, growth that we'll see over the next few days. Do everything in like a still air box. Um, or just, you know, really use strict standards in a, in a clean working closet or something like that that doesn't have carpet. I'll re-sterilize my tool if you ever need to, to uh, if you ever lose the culture or something, try to, try to do some more work on it. This is our pink oyster. You can notice the mycelium's pink. Um, every mycelium is going to be different for each strain. So it's pretty cool. You're gonna see these own unique characteristics to your mycelium. And that once you become, you know, rather familiar with the cultivation process, you can really identify uh, strains just by looking at the mycelium. So this right here is the shiitake mushroom. And you can notice, this is actually an H culture. This was inoculated uh, March 9th. And uh, it starts to brown which we'll see in our production blocks as well uh, as it ages the mycelium browns. A lot of new cultivators will get scared and think it might be a contamination, but it's actually really healthy and uh, it's totally natural. After pouring up my plates, I just use these sleeves to kind of cover them until I need them. That way it keeps any dust from landing on your petri dishes or, or on my petri dishes in this case. You can torch your tools and uh, torch them until they're red hot and you start transferring. transferring. Um, so yeah, grabbing a torch and, or a lighter, 
Some people use an alcohol lamp. We kind of use our, our blade as a little uh, spatula. And I'll just make a stack like that right in front of my flow hood. And uh, one technique for, for transferring with your Petri dish is uh, called like a clamshell technique, is where you take the dish and only lift up this much and close it right back up. That's a good way to utilize if you're, if you're just looking for a quick transfer, and that's what's the best way to do it, honestly. You do need a really dedicated sterile space for this kind of work, so if you do have like a little flow cabinet, uh, I'd recommend you either make one or you can, you can find people that make them. You can buy them in smaller sizes as well. Research before you really go crazy with it, or just go crazy and find out you know, through trial and error like uh, like I did. Take just a tiny piece of tissue from a Petri dish, drop it into a liquid culture jar, and really just expand the mycelium. I like to utilize the liquid culture for expansion, at, uh, really, to be honest with you. It's really nice to be able to inoculate with the uh, liquid culture and just pour it into your spawn. You just get more points of contact with liquid. But both work great. If you can't get access to this parafilm, I've seen other people online will use like a saran wrap two weeks to every four weeks. I'm in here transferring it into new plates. Oftentimes, you find yourself uh, fruiting it within 10 days of inoculation to a uh, substrate. Taki's a classic strain that's probably the most cultivated gourmet mushroom in the world. It's uh, also very medicinal as well really helps boost your overall immune function and it's really good for you. So I enjoy growing shiitake. It's actually one of my favorite mushrooms to grow. And uh, it, def it definitely is one of the most labor intensive mushrooms to grow also. It's a great mushroom for me. Um, and everybody loves shiitake mushrooms. It's definitely one that everybody's familiar with. So 